Hi, my name is Mark Brown and this is my journey deeper into God's Word. And I am looking at a really deep personal topic today. Something that I have <laughs> have found great um, joy and, and release in and I want to share with you today. And what inspires me is a passage from Mark 5 beginning at verse 1. Let me read this to you. They went across the lake to the region of Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. The man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell onto his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want of me with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. And the demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the, into the pigs, into the herd. <laughs> With this dramatic story of this poor man who's having to hide away. No one could subdue him. And he's afflicted by this vast number of demons. And he begs to Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Take me from this pain and torment. And what does Jesus do? What is it that he does first? Well, first, he, he, he recognizes the demon activity. He recognizes that someone's going on. Then he says, listen to this. Jesus asks him one question. A key question, what is your name? This is fascinating to me. And from this, I have learned so much. How do we deal with the traumas and the trials and the demons, those things that have possession of us, those things that have possession of me? How do I deal with them? Well, if we take this example, we first have to name them. Let me explain what I mean by that. I, got an e I get a lot of emails, which I love. People asking me for advice and support. And my role, part of my role of being a pastor is responding to them. And I spend a good chunk of my week in doing that very, that very ministry. And I had one guy write to me, and he, and he wrote that he had felt this pressure, this pressure. And it just was holding him back. And he didn't know why he was able to live his life fully and able to really grow in his faith. So I asked him some questions. I said, are you married? How is your marriage going? So I knew he was married, should I say. I asked him, how is your marriage going? How is your work? And what secret activity are you engaging in that you've told no one else? In other words, what I was doing was I was saying to him, Name what it is that's holding you back. Name what it is that's possessing you. His response was very, very telling. He talked about this secret sin. He did share it. To his credit, he shared with me in pastoral confidence, and obviously I'm not going to go into who it was or what the sin was, but he shared it to me. And then he said something really powerful. He said, you know... In me writing this down to you, I've been thinking about it. And in me thinking about responding to you, should I say, I've been thinking about this a lot. And I realize I need to deal with this. I need to come to terms and to handle this. You see, in him naming that which is was secretly possessing him, that not even his own wife knew about, Probably not even anyone in his life knew about. But he confided in me because I gave him the opportunity to. And my sense that God was saying is, Mark, you need to ask him this specific question. Is that he was able for the first time to name it. 
to name it secret sin. And in doing that, he started to gather the resources to deal with it. And I'm going to give him a phone call, maybe tonight, uh, but soon I'll give him a phone call. And we'll talk about this very topic. How do you come to terms? Now you've named it. And that's what Jesus says. When he's dealing with the man who's possessed with uh, 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 demons, uh, uh, he says, what is your name? In other words, he's saying, who am I dealing with? When I know what I'm dealing with, I can then respond. You see, the herd of pigs was exactly the response. You see, the man worked with Jesus. He said to him, send them in. Send them in. The, de the, the demons uh, begged Jesus, send us into the herd of pigs. And Jesus responded. Now, part of me reads that and goes, why are you taking advice? Why are you listening to the demons? But he could see that the response was needed. And, and, and sending those demons out of that man was his priority. And, and he took the uh, direction and sent them into the demons and the man into the pigs. And the man was free. Naming it is so important. Naming what it is that's possessing us. So if you feel, if you feel like something is holding you back, if you feel like you have something that is holding you back, what is it? What is your secret sin? What is it that you haven't told anyone? What is it that's holding you back? You need to name those demons. You know, uh, my wife Christy and I, and I uh, have her permission to share this. Uh, we, like any couple, have lots of things that can potentially come between us. Lots of things that put pressure and challenge the uh, relationship that we have, the community that we have. And what we found, drawing from this passage, it, I don't know how many times we've actually verbalized this very passage, is that what we found is that when we name that which is between us, a miscommunication. It could be as simple as, I thought you meant this, and to which I'm able to respond, well, actually, no, I meant this, or she responds, actually, I mean this. But if we don't name it, then what happens is that we fester. It festers. It remains underground. And it's never dealt with. And when it's never dealt with, then the issues, the bitterness, the anger, the resentment start to build. And before you know it, you're looking at that person, that person you love, uh, you're looking at your wife, your husband, your partner, and you're thinking, what is the point of this? I, I don't even see the point of this. If it, 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 the key is that each and every day, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down in your anger. Well, how do you express that anger? You have to name it. And that takes, you know, you've got to step over your pride. You've got to step over the, they're wrong, I'm right, rubbish. You should always start. I always start by saying, what have I done wrong? And naming that. I should not have said this to you. I should not have done this. I, I, I am naming it. And as soon as you name it, you have power over it. As soon as Jesus asked, what is your name? Then you see the power flowing from that. He is able to deal with those demons. In the same way, you can deal with the stuff that's going on in with your life, not by ignoring them, not by pretending, not by making up some kind of quaint, clever uh, mental gymnastics, some psychological twist that enables you to ignore it. You absolutely have to bluntly face it head on and say, this is my problem. So here's the action. And this is what I'm going to share with the, the young guy who emailed me. And I'll share it with you and it might apply to you as well. You, the first thing is you've got to name it. When you name it, you've got to share it with someone. Now that is hard. If it involves your partner, if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, you've got to tell them. If it's something that's personal to you, you have to tell uh, your pastor, someone you trust, maybe your mum or dad, your best friend, 
maybe your partner, your wife or your husband, but you have to declare it. And make sure you're safe. Make sure you tell it to someone who's not going to gossip it around. Someone who's going to honour and respect the vulnerability and the struggle that you are about to face. Maybe it's a secret habit, an addiction. You need to share it. And when you share it, you're naming it. And as the word says, when you name it, you have control over it. But not you alone, not me alone. When I name something, you know, I'm not just, I'm the one that's got it all. You know, the, um, the Greek for power is dynamos. The dynamism, the dynamic that I have is not my own energy, my own intellect. It's the fact, and this is the key part of the reading, Jesus cast the demons out. So the next step, first is you have to admit, admit it and name it. Second, you have to share it. And third, you have to make sure right, right at the fundamentals, at every, at every way possible that Jesus is part of it because you can't, I can't do it on my own strength. You call upon the name of Jesus and you say, Jesus, help me. I am trapped. I am held. I am caught up. As that poor man in, in the passage I read earlier, he was literally caught by these demons and he needed Jesus. And in the same way, you and I can equally be caught as well and need that release that comes only through the dynamic, the dynamos, the power of Jesus. This is a very, very uh, touchy subject. I'm not going to invite you to leave your comments below as I normally do. Please be aware that if you leave a comment that others will read it. And this is something, if you're struggling with something very private, you can share it with someone you trust. Now, I invite you, if, if you've got no one, then and you need someone to share with, then go to facebook.com forward slash markbrown.page like my page and inbox me. You can send me a message through there. Now, a lot of people watch these videos. If it takes me a while to get back to you, then please be patient, but I will try to get back to you and respond. God bless.